Hi friend. So in this video, we are going to talk about how we can transfer a array of structures on the GPU, especially when the case is that this array of structures has a pointer members in it. So the example I'm showing is here. So this uh, example struct has two members. One is just an integer called base and the second is an integer array which uh, is which I'm calling index. And the reason this can sometimes be useful is uh, I'm showing a real case from my research here. So I work with uh, images and sometimes I have to work with blocks of images separately. And in that case, uh, the data for those images is here. And then for each block, there is some different metadata like I'm showing here. So this is the metadata. And so I make these structures which have both uh, like the data which is in the form of arrays and then there is metadata in the form of uh, this uh, actual values. And now the question is how to put this data on the GPU and how to do, do work on the GPU. So let's get started. I'm going to show you multiple examples. So I'll start with something that won't actually work and then we'll move our way up to see how it can work. So the first example I have to share with you guys is this. So I'll show you what I'm trying to do. So uh, as I said before, we have that uh, structure which has a base, which is integer and an array called index, which is a integer uh, array. So what I'm trying to do is uh, I set uh, that array with, I've set the base with the block ID which is just I here. So uh, focus on this part of the code right now. So the base is just uh, I like the block ID. And then uh, in the index, I put the separate thread IDs that it would have on the GPU. So that's why I use the second nested for loop. And then each has the same thread ID. Uh, and in this case, it's not the ex exclusive thread ID for the whole computation. It's for that block, the local thread ID, if you will. So that is the J here. And on the GPU, what I want to do is I want to look at this uh, each index and access it according to its local thread ID. And to that, I want to add uh, the base into the block dimension. So the block ID into the uh, that. And then I want to, on top of that, add something like a thousand. So essentially this is, uh, somewhat the same code we did before, but using structures and using a structure which has a, a pointer as a member. So to do this, uh, the first thing we would try is we first allocate a structure. Uh, we did that here using malloc. And then we use CUDA malloc to allocate another structure which would live on the GPU. Then we copy that and uh, to using CUDA mem copy. And then we uh, basically call our kernel. And here I'm doing some error checking because here it's essential and it's always a good idea to do error checking. So here what I'm doing is I'm making the device synchronize and I'm seeing if I get success. If not, then I get an error if it doesn't, uh, the kernel doesn't run correctly. And then I'm basically trying to copy back my data on the CPU and then I'm displaying my output. So let's run this. I've already compiled it. So let's see what happens when I do this. So it's given by, let's use these arguments. And it the main thing to see is it gives me those results, which are the local thread IDs I got, but the kernel launch, it was failed. And the error was an illegal memory access was encountered. So now let's go back to the code and see what happened. So what happened was, if you guys see while initializing, I used malloc because this is my CPU side array. So obviously I'll use malloc. And then when I did my mem copy here, on the GPU side of uh, my uh, array of structures, what I'm doing is I'm copying that malloc address. So the address here for my example index uh, is actually a CPU address and that has ended up on the GPU. And of course that is an illegal memory. So this will not work. So now what else can we do? So for that, 
as I talked in the previous video, maybe we should use uh, like um, unified memory. So what I did instead of malloc, everywhere I used malloc managed, CUDA malloc managed for the example. And I didn't even need a, a device example now, like D example. I can just do it with this. And if you see, there is the add and then I have the print and I'm doing the exact same thing here. Uh, adding the base in by the block dimension plus thousand and then this time what do I see so let's try this one now so I'm going to try B the only difference is now I'm using CUDA malloc managed instead of just malloc so that worked and it gave the same results like before I have added a thousand just to make it different and now you can see with malloc managed it would work so unified memory to the rescue however i also want to take the case where we are not using unified memory and that's because uh, here we are assuming we are having full control over the code but uh, a lot of times in our work there is already existing code like maybe from a library or something and that you cannot just start using CUDA malloc managed there because it's already defined and that's uh, a lot of times the case with me like I work with the inside toolkit library which is used for like image processing especially medical image processing so there I have a image defined and it's already using their uh, memory management so now I have to start from scratch and maybe now I uh, it doesn't make sense for me to use malloc managed I want to use malloc because I'm uh, anyway I, I have to copy it so might as well copy it with uh, like CUDA malloc and uh, CUDA mem copy. So that's the example here and I hope you'll try to see how complicated it gets because just because I cannot use malloc managed. So in this case what I'll have to do is I need three kinds of uh, array of structures actually. One is a pure um, this one example uh, is a pure uh, host side or the CPU side array this I example I is for intermediate so it's like a kind of a hybrid we'll talk about it it has some things on the CPU some things on the GPU and the D example is a purely device side or the GPU side uh, uh, array of structures so obviously uh, so example would have malloc I example also has a malloc uh, allocated to it for the memory and the CUDA malloc is used for uh, D example because it's the device side so this part remains same I initialize example however as we talked about the problem that we cannot uh, copy this directly example I make an intermediate array this is exactly same as example uh, the only difference is that the uh, the arrays inside the structure the index arrays they are going to be CUDA malloc instead of malloc and then I just copy my uh, example index arrays into them so I use a CUDA malloc CUDA mem copy and following that I can again malloc the device side things and then CUDA mem copy the device from the intermediate array not the original array and then I run it I do error checking and then now I have to copy it back I again have to copy it back into intermediate array because the pointers uh, for the index arrays are matched to the intermediate array and not the original uh, array and then I can copy back the basically the into this pure host side array so all this thing we had to do because just because this part here this index this has to be a GPU side uh, pointer and in the example like not the I example the example structure it is a CPU side array and you cannot access that if you, unless you use CUDA malloc managed and I'm assuming that's not the option in this example so just to do that we have to first have an intermediate and then we copy that and the intermediate has all its uh, regular members as uh, directly on the CPU but it has its uh, pointer members on the GPU and then you can copy the whole intermediate on the GPU so that's the other example I had and let's see how this works so I'll show you with C this is example C and it gives the exact same result so one other thing before I end this video so I have another example 
And now let's say I want to do something with the, uh, again, I'm going back to the CUDA malloc managed code, but I want to do something with the base. I want to, let's say, increase the base, which is like the integer member by 1000. Okay, so I go to my kernel, I add 1000 to it. And now I try to, I say new basis, and then I try to uh, print out the basis. So let's see what happens. Example, so you'll expect it to have like 1000, 1001, 1002, because the base was initially initialized to 1, 2, 3, and then we are adding 1000 to it, okay? So see, the 1000 actually did not happen. And now let's try to understand what went wrong, why, like, why didn't it happen? So what we're doing here by this statement, uh, this statement, we are essentially making a new structure on the stack in the GPU side, okay? And uh, so on that new structure, we are using the, and, and we are copying back our original structure on the device side, which lives on the heap. Okay, and then we are doing some things, but even though this my example lives on the stack, the index member of it is actually a pointer which lives again on the heap. And then that index we are changing, so that worked. But however, when I do this, this thing is not on the stack. It's on the, uh, sorry, it's, it is on the stack. And we are changing that. Uh, so that is going to end as soon as this add works. Like it's not going to exist because it's for this function. The scope of it is for this function. So to if you want to actually make persistent changes to something that's not a pointer, then you have to actually go to its location on the heap and then change it. So to do that, you can do something like the easiest way would be to maybe do example and then block id x dot x and now if you do the change here this is the actual location and hopefully i didn't test this out before but let's see if it works so let's just do a make and i don't know it's making all of those things so Bear with me for a second. And yeah, so example 4D44. Let's see what happens now. See, now it's 1000, 1001, 1002. So now you could make persistent changes. So that's the other thing to remember. If you declare things again and copy back, then it makes a new copy and the changes are happening to that copy. So anyway, so those are some things which uh, I struggled with originally when I was doing array of structures on GPU. So I just wanted to share those with you all. So that's all I had for this video. Thank you. And uh, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Bye.